Hello and welcome back. In this video, I am going to introduce you to another important concept in Excel formulas and functions that is named references. We also call it as named ranges. As the name itself says, this feature in Excel enables us to give custom names to range of cells and in turn use them in formulas. First we will see how to create named ranges using direct method from selection of data and using name manager. Then we will explore how to use the named references in Excel formulas. We will see both single and range of cells. And finally, we will see how to edit and delete the named ranges using name manager. All these concepts are very important. So let's go back to Excel and explore each of these interesting topics. So we are back into Excel and we will use this sample data during course of this video. Let's first learn how to create named ranges using direct method. Before that, let's try to pull the cost of apple using normal cell reference method. So let's start by entering the equal to symbol and then reference the cell which has the cost of apple. We will get result as 250. Now let's try to create a named reference for the same value and use it in our formula. For that, let's first select the cell which has the apple cost value and then go to the name box on top left corner. Here we typically see the reference of the cell we have selected. Let's delete that reference and then type in as apple cost in this box and hit enter. Now we have created a named range for G2 cell with new name as apple cost using direct method. Few things I could like to bring to your attention. When creating a named range in Excel, we need to follow some key rules. Rule number one, the first character must be letter underscore or a backslash. This is mandatory for first character only. The other characters can be letters, numbers, periods or underscore. You can use them in any combinations. Rule number two, no spaces are allowed. Named ranges must not contain any spaces. Rule number three, a named range must not be an existing cell reference. Like you must not create a named range like A1, B2 or any other cell reference. Rule number four, Named ranges are case insensitive. You can type the names in uppercase, lowercase, proper case. All these names are considered as same. Rule number 5. The maximum length of characters that is allowed in named ranges is 255, not beyond that. So after we create a named range, no matter how many named ranges we create, all those names can be accessed through this dropdown in the name box. You can see the apple cost appears in the dropdown. Now, when we select this name, Excel will automatically select this cell which is referenced by this name. This feature may not appear important right now, but imagine you have the data with millions of rows and every time you will have to drag over all the data to select it. Instead, just select all the data, assign a name reference and then use this name to select all the data without the need of dragging all over. I hope that makes sense. Now to use this name in Excel formulas, Let's add equal to symbol in this cell and now if you start typing APP, you will see the name appears in the intelligence list. Just select it and hit enter. You will get the same result. That is how you can use named references directly into Excel formulas. Now let's see how to create the named ranges using selected data. Say for example, I want to create a named ranges using the table headers as item, quantity, unit cost and total cost and then assign all the range of cells below each header to its respective header named references. So we just have to select all the cells, go to formulas on the top and you will find a section as defined names. Here you will find an option create from selection. Let's click it and in the options window we get options to create names using top row, left column bottom row and right column. In our example, we need to create names using top row. So let's uncheck left column and then hit OK. You will see nothing happens. But if you go to the name box, you will see all the headers as new named ranges and if we select each of these header names, it will select the range of cells below this header. That is perfect. We can also create new named ranges using name manager and that option can be found in this section of defined names. Let's click it and in the window that shows up, you will see all the list of existing named ranges. You can click on new to create new named reference. 
let's give it a new name as total cost. You can also define the scope of this named range. It can be restricted to Excel worksheet or you can make it available across the Excel workbook. Now at the below where it says refers to, you can use this up arrow mark to change this option window into selection window. Then select the required range of cells as input and then click on down arrow mark or even hit enter to go back to previous option window. Once all the fields are filled in, just click on OK to create new named reference. Now, if we click on the drop down in the name box, you will see total cost now appears as a new named reference. Now let's see some simple examples on how to use named ranges in Excel formulas and functions. We have already seen a small example of extracting apple cost value using named range. Now let's calculate the total of quantity, unit cost and total cost using their respective named ranges. Here I have already calculated the summation values using normal excel cell references and now we will calculate the same values using named ranges. Let's start by adding equal to symbol and then use sum function. Here you can directly add quantity named range as input close the bracket and hit enter to get the same value. The only thing we need to remember here is we must not enclose any named ranges in double quotes. Otherwise Excel will treat it as text values. Let's add the same sum function to other cells and use their respective name references as input and of course we get the same result. So that's how we can use named ranges in Excel formulas and functions. Lastly, let's see how to edit or delete the name ranges and that can be done using name manager. Let's click on the name manager to open the options window. Here you will find both edit and delete options. To edit any named range, we can select it among the available list and then click on edit. In the edit window, you can change the name of existing named reference or you can also change the range of cells which is assigned to this named range. These options are basically same as that of creating the new named range. Let's click on cancel and then go back to name manager. Now to delete any named range, we just have to select it among the list, then click on delete and then finally click on OK to delete that named reference. So basically name manager can be used to create, edit and delete any named ranges. Now that we have seen all the key features of named references in Excel, I could like to close this topic by going through advantages of using this feature. First, it improves readability. Instead of using complex cell references, you can assign names to these ranges and then use those names into your formulas for easier understanding. Second, easier to maintain. If the cell references changes, you only need to update the name definition and all the related formulas will update automatically. Third, simplifies navigation. Named references can act as bookmarks, allowing you to jump to a specific range by selecting its name from the name box. Fourth, dynamic and scalable. With functions like offset and index, named ranges can automatically adjust as your data changes. Lastly, reduce errors. By using meaningful names instead of cell references, you can minimize the risk of making mistakes in Excel formulas. For example, if you are summing two different ranges, you can name them and then use those names into your formulas. This makes your formulas clearer, more meaningful and easy to understand. That's all I wanted to cover in this video.